Hi, so let's talk about your signature block. When you've written an email, you should have a signature that is ready to go. And sometimes you'll have multiple signatures, particularly if you play different roles and have different titles for different organizations. So let's look at what you do. What is a signature block first? It's a block of text at the bottom of an email. Now, what's in a signature block? Your name, your title, your company, contact information, business website usually, uh, LinkedIn URL possibly, and maybe even a logo. So how does this play out? So let's say I have this email and now I've noticed, ah, I have no signature block for Mr. Caesar Flickerman, who as we all know was in the Hunger Games. So <laughs> he's written Seneca Crane an email. Obviously he must have a signature block. So Let's give him one. Here's his name. He might bold it, don't go crazy, but make it look professional. He has his role and association. He has the actual address, uh, email, um, or website of his company. Um, do, you ch do you include your own email in the signature block? That's debated. Uh, many people don't. It seems weird in an email that comes from you to include your email. Uh, <laughs> just seems odd. Usually you include a phone number and your company's uh, uh, website, but occasionally a lot of people will have you, if your email gets forwarded a great deal, you will be in people's uh, contact information and you may want people to actually get your email address. So that's when you would include it. Let's look at another example. So here is an email. We have this best regards Amanda Packer. Poor Amanda Packer uh, does not have a signature block, so let's give her one. So now she says best regards and she might type, and many people do uh, a personal like, um, you know, Amanda or Amanda Packer underneath here, and then her signature block would follow. So she might have a logo for her university as she does in this case, apparently they have a tree. Um, <laughs> I just picked a tree and thought that, okay, that can uh, represent this mountain college, which I made up. She is the sponsor for this organization and she's an associate clinical professor. There's her cell phone number and there's her LinkedIn uh, URL. Now here we have another one, um, John Andre. He is thinking someone, he's the head of British intelligence. Um, uh, at the West Point Fort in West Point, New York, many people will include their physical address, but you do not have to. If people are going to be mailing you things or corresponding with you, then yes, include your physical address. If you want them to visit you, um, to come to your office, you might include that. Um, you know, and you can include your phone number. And, um, and LinkedIn is, is something people frequently include because then if someone wants to connect with you, they just click the link and can instantly connect. Now, do we include <laughs> our, uh, a quote, a, 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 you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. I, I think it's kind of outmoded and it takes up space. And so what you want to remember is people are now reading emails on their cell phones. So anything that takes up more space, so when you get an email chain and you have to anticipate getting email chains, things that take up more space are more annoying. So, you know, don't do it. Don't stick a meme on there just because you can. Um, <laughs> it's just annoying, particularly if you respond multiple times to a particular email chain and everyone has to see that same quote and that same meme over and over and over again. It just makes you more irritating. So don't be irritating to the people around you. Uh, so if you do get a new email account, what do you do? You set up your signature block. You might set up multiple signature blocks, but get a nice signature block and include it. That's what we do in business. Hope you've enjoyed this and that it's helped you a little bit. Have a good day. Bye.